This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have. Life can be pretty damn hard. Get some support at betterhelp.com slash allies. Hello and welcome to the Easy Allies podcast. I will be your moderator, Brandon Jones. Joining me this week, panelists, Brad Ellis. Hello. Michael Damiani. How's it going? My red pepper hate and co-moderator, Daniel Bloodworth. All right. That's good. Making it all happen in the control room. I'll Hank. Hi. I just like green peppers a little bit more. Let That's it be fine. known. Yeah, Blood hates red peppers. <laughs> Surprising. Distinguished guests, we are here to talk about some of the biggest events and news in the world of video games. But before we do that, we must first answer for all of the mistakes we made in last week's podcast. Isla Hank, begin corrections music, Boop. please. Boop. Regarding Dawn Legacy, the clue said it was in 1982. Legacy didn't come out until 2010. Mm. Isla, you're yelling at me. Bitch, Dawn Legacy know. specifically gave the year. I forgot to mention Perfect Dark among Xbox's shooter, and I... Xbox's shooters, and I did say Splinter Cell and got confused, and people think that's where my brain got crossed. Mm. I'll accept that. <laughs> uh, in a way, there is a Grand Theft Auto movie. I think I kind of knew about this. It's released in 1977, directed by Ron Howard, called Grand Theft Auto. Oh, yeah. It's a different IP, but it's noteworthy because the similarity between the movie poster and the UK box art for GTA 3. Just just Google Grand Theft Auto Ron Howard, and there's all of GTA's marketing campaign. You literally <laughs> see that like, they just ripped all of it. Uh, Phil Spencer has confirmed the Elder Scrolls 6 will be exclusive to Xbox on yeah. consoles. I yeah. missed that. I, to I actually totally missed that, I think. Return of the Jedi was 39 years ago. I said 30. Woo. Sorry. Fake fan. Fake, Fake fan. fan. AGDQ is awesome. Games, games done quick. I said all because I, I, <laughs> I think I just slurred the name. I, they I, were I don't think it's quick, all games though. done quick. They were. Most of them are. Uh, the line is, look how they massacred my boy. Not look what they did to my boy. But it's one of those film things that it's like, everyone says, look what they did to yeah. my boy, but that's not it. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, according to VGC, the God of War PC port was co-developed by Canadian studio Jetpack Interactive. Oh. So Sony Santa Monica did have some help. Cool. Alibaba is like if you combine Amazon, eBay, and Walmart and put it in Asia. That's Alibaba. Oh. And corrections, music, please. Boop. Dang. Not actually a correction, but this is from Zach Burroughs. I actually have a fun story about Greg Hastings' tournament paintball. Uh. When I was a kid, I asked for a GameCube for Christmas and got an Xbox instead. Why? Because my parents were part of Amway at the time, which had a partnership with the game and had it feature their energy drinks in it. Whoa. Wow. What a story. I hope you got a GameCube eventually. Yeah, GameCube was sick. We at Easy Allies have to solve a murder. Oh, my God. This is who gamed it. There's been a video game murder. It's up to the Easy Allied Def Detective Agency. Defective at Detective Agency. <laughs> Maybe. We'll find out. What we know is this. Lanky Kong has been murdered. He was found dead. We believe he was murdered in the church in the slums in Sector 5 of Midgar. What was he doing there? We don't know. It's time for someone to figure out the clues and to solve this thing for us. It might take a while. Right. Who is going to be our lead detective on this case? Will it be Professor Herschel Layton? Detective Pikachu, <laughs> Sebastian Castellanos, oh. or Nick Valentine? Dude, I'm doing Sebastian. We gotta go Sebastian. I'm 100% yeah. on Leighton. I, I mean, Leighton. Leighton's great. I was waiting for that Leighton one. Leighton can Leighton's actually great. solve a game. Yes. He can. Hey, Sebastian, Sebastian can get it done, all right? There. He just yeah. might be drunk while he's doing it. Things could get violent. <laughs> Things could get violent, blood. I don't know if Leighton can, yeah. can hack Sebastian it. Sebastian can hold his own. Yeah, no, Sebastian, I don't know. He doesn't have a firm grip on reality. It's that, true. That'll make it more fun. <laughs> yeah. Neither, yeah. I think to solve a Lanky yeah. Kong case, Lanky Kong's don't murder. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if like, reality right up is, yeah. is going to factor in this. All right. You're hired, Sebastian. Good luck. Lots of announcements this week. This was a feel good week. Lots of new beginnings. Lots of like studios coming together, new IP coming out, finding out people are working on more Star Wars games than we thought they were working on. Blizzard posted a game announcement? It's more of like a hiring. These notice. are modern game right. announcements now. Yeah, this is where we are. If you ask Jason Schreier, this is this is going to replace E3. This is the the blog post on the official website announcing a game, but actually totally asking for people to come and work yep. for that company. Blizzard is making a survival game, which can mean a lot of things. Yeah. What do you think it means? 
I think they played Valheim when we were like, this ah, is sick. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I don't blame them. Yeah. I mean, and, and like, everyone made this joke, but the obligatory joke of just, is it being a woman at Blizzard? Mm-hmm. Right. Like, yeah. It, 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 it does look like there's some sort of modern crossover. There's like people looking through a portal I or think something. It's a, like yeah, normal yeah. people. We know it's a new IP, I you know, guess. Yeah. Outlander their way into some sort of like mm-hmm. magical realm. World, yeah. And, yeah. It's interesting that they're not going to start by uh, leveraging any of their existing IP stuff, like even making a new game, but like trying to go, like, go that route. Tainted. Yeah. Those IPs. Yeah, exactly. You got to start fresh. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I think the concept is oh, have, so different. Yeah. It'd be weird. You'd have to maybe well, you could shoehorn Warcraft into it. Maybe. But not not yeah. doing like the riot thing, basically, yeah. where everything is kind of connected. Yeah, yeah. I think it's that better. we know of. I think it's better yeah. not to. A kid in Stormwind's court. What do you say? A kid from our world goes to Stormwind. Whoa, whoa! He's got a skateboard. Dude, or it's Anduin. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that that part of the concept is. I mean, it's kind of similar to Forspoken, right? Like. Yes, got that going on. Sure. They're going to be a few years yeah. apart, but let me show you rock and roll. <laughs> They're good. <laughs> They're currently... I really hope that factors in. Yeah, <laughs> put it on some orcs head. Listen, man. Uh, it's neat that they're hiring. It obviously is. I mean, everything coming out of this company now uh, is well timed or poorly timed. It's hard to tell. Um, but obviously, this is Blizzard wanting to get some good vibes out there for their company mm-hmm. to create a new IP. Um, <laughs> create a new universe with us. It says in caps uh, on the on the post. Would this be as exciting if they hadn't said some weird genre they hadn't done before? If they were just like, "We're making a new game. Here's some weird fantasy art." And we'd be like, "All oh, right, cool, cool, new IP." But is it like, "Whoa, survival game? Whoa, so specific." I just think it's interesting because it's something different from them, at least mm-hmm. something they haven't tackled before. So that's exciting. I think they're hoping you would say Hopefully, that. Yeah. Jones, I'm hoping it's the Hearthstone effect where there was this concept. This is the Blizzard MO, dude. There was something before. They take this kind of idea and work it in their own way and make it really good. Right. Streamline. Right. Make it easier. Make it more sure, accessible. Yeah. yeah. And I've, I've, you know, I don't know what the the authenticity of it is or whatever, but I've just been hearing murmurings that like other people in, that are in the company and familiar with the project are like, yeah, this is actually pretty cool. Could. So, right. yeah. Do you think this is maybe like lying around... And like Microsoft Xbox came in and they were like, that, that, what's that? And they're like, oh, Bobby wouldn't let us do that. Or, or like, oh, uh, we were, y- you know, toying around paying money, you know. Maybe when Mike I mean, Mars I'm sure they've seen in. everything that they're yeah. working on, whether it's, you know, even, you know, in pre production or not. But yeah, could uh, be. But yeah, I, I think that it's probably not that big of a factor on it. Because sure. there's lots of factors they mm-hmm. could, changing the day to day life of the Blizzard Activision employee. Right. And I wonder how much of that. Yeah. Factored in when we heard about this, mm-hmm. you know, if there are no lawsuits, no nothing. Like, were, was this on track? Have they been working on this? I think they've been working on this for a while, though. It doesn't sound like it just started or something, right? Well, I don't know how long a while is, but right. you know, they've been probably kicking this idea around for a long time. And maybe when like y- Mike Yabara came in, he gave him a little more freedom. I mean, it's obviously with Activision, they probably have more freedom now than they did or are going to under Activision. So maybe, yeah. You don't go work at Blizzard. Me. Maybe. Anybody. Sure. <laughs> sure, if they fix they're their still, shit. Yeah. Is that a there's threat? A senior character. Yeah. If you, if, if, if you guys don't shape up. Yeah. We're going. We're turning this car around and going <laughs> straight <laughs> Blizzard now. To Santa Monica, to Activision's offices. Uh, I, it, it just, they're just very, the quotes, man. I can read the whole thing, but it's like, do you like survival games? Do you want to join a collaborative team of experienced developers at the early stage of a new project in a new world and help write the next chapter in Blizzard's story? It's like, well, yeah, we all want that chapter to be better, but that's a little, I don't mm-hmm. know, that's a little bait and switch. Yeah. I've... The old, there's only one person that can make Blizzard better. You. <laughs> you know, like, what? Feels like, yeah, it feels, <laughs> I mean, I get that's what they probably have to say. I mean, mm-hmm. What else yeah. are they going to say? Yeah, but at sure. yeah. the same time, it's like too soon <laughs> to, to, to really be like even remotely believing that. It's just, yeah, they still got some things to like sort out and just, until this thing is closed and stuff, this deal, like this next year, or whatever, is going to be kind of a wild ride. I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think things will go as expected. I, it's a little interesting to see uh, if they really keep, especially keep Bobby around the whole time. Sure. Like they said they are. I, I, deep down, I don't think he's making it to the end. I, I don't think he is. Well, we're but. not going to hear about this game for 
Yeah. yeah. This, th- this year, maybe even right, next right. year, maybe yeah. 2024, yeah. we get a trailer. Like This will be shown off in like an Xbox conference or something. Yeah, yeah two years, day. three years from now. Yeah, this is just probably part of their corporate strategy. To, like, we need some kind of a win here. Like, something that just okay. isn't bad headlines. That's that not a bad is, headline. That won't potentially... Yeah dig up any other stuff. It's like, this right. seems very innocuous to announce. Or another thing is, there's so many people talking to the press right now, and it's like, let's get that out there before somebody we heard it, yeah. it, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> Just talking to, like, a judge in the courtroom. Have you heard about our new IP development? Really exciting <laughs> judge. Like, no, nah, not really. Mm-hmm. Have you been to careers.blizzard.com They lately? need some good news, and this is, like, some good news. Yes. Or and what, I if ho- it, what if it's the flip of that, that, like, the judge was like, well, you know, my kid really likes survival <laughs> games. And yeah, they were like, oh, there. okay. Have you played Valentine? <laughs> <I noticed, laughs> notice you got a VFX artist position that's open. Be the next frontier, game announcements in the court. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, sometimes it just... Get a piece of court documents. Wait a minute. You know, like we were talking it's about another Star Wars game here. Splinter Cell and some of these other things. It's like, it just sometimes it makes the hiring yeah. process easier yeah. mm-hmm. if you can just be like straight up with, this is what we're making. Do you like this kind of game? Mm-hmm. Do you want to make this kind of game? Come over here. Otherwise, you know, if they try to just like put it in job descriptions, you know, you get these situations where again, like it leaks anyways. You know, it's like yep. Naughty Dog starts hiring for multiplayer. <laughs> right. like, I wonder like, what they're doing. Hey, yeah, <laughs> what's, what's happening there? Exactly. And that's I, I imagine myself as someone who's like not never been in development, never aspired, never never submitted a resume as a game developer. But like, I I can see there being something attractive to being like I bet it is just a mess over there right now. And I bet that could kind of learn from that mess in a sure. weird way. Like it might be kind of a fun, weird place to work for a year or two sure. on this project and then just move on to something else. Or that could be the last thing you would want as a dev. Maybe, yeah. Seven years ago, Brad, mm-hmm. in 2014, mm. we also got a brand new IP from Blizzard. It's very exciting at the time. Oh. They announced oh. that Overwatch there. Yeah. Um, yeah. 2014, wow. Kind of in rough shape right now. I think they're like both yeah. Destiny and Overwatch are like, why'd we do it too? You know, it's like, yeah. you know, Fort- there's no Fortnite well, too. There never will be probably. They're like- probably forced to. I don't think Destiny's doing fine. It's just, yeah, the whole faulting process is a little frustrating for, for people. But I, you can also understand with downloads why they're doing it. You think Overwatch is feeling like that second child where it's just like they, they brought the baby home and now everybody's cooing over the baby and you're like, well, you were all. Stoked about me I seven years like ago, and now you can't even get the sequel. We can't even get Lego sets in stores. <laughs> it, it'd feel like a, the the second child or whatever if everyone hated you also, and your parents constantly were yelling at you. Then you'd be Overwatch, right? I just I, I bet there's a lot of really talented people who mean well and love the franchise and love their fans at Overwatch who are just kind of stuck in this horrible. Oh position yeah, now. of course. And then here all the, come these new employees working on this fresh new untouched IP. Bobby comes in the room. What are you going to get out of here, Bobby? Like, <laughs> I can't come in. Yeah, I made some drawings. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, but boy. yeah, it's 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 exciting because, and I guess we can speak to what Schreier said because coming up after this is Crisis doing their thing. Just mm. this idea of like the blog post. Tra- there was no trailer. There was a Crisis trailer. Like. Job application, so everyone's piece of art at least, right? I remember seeing there was a piece of art, right? That's the thing. You put a piece of art, then the you got employees. Yep, that's all we need. How much is uh, art portfolio? Um, But are we are we going to be seeing a lot more of this? Is it really only like a Crytek and a and a um, Blizzard that can pull off just a post on their website that'll make the headlines? Kind of like a new trend. It seems like through game developers. I just think we're like Splinter Cell doing that also. Yeah. But, I mean, Monolith Soft did that yeah. years ago with that fantasy yeah, whatever that, game they're making. Yeah, it's yeah. like job recruitments mm-hmm. coming from the corporate thing. And I feel like I feel like that's a, it's, a, it's a safe thing when it's early on, like like how nebulous the concept is. Yeah. It's not really giving anything away. But it's like, what does that it, mean? as Bud yeah. said earlier, it's like when it's a little bit more obvious I, what it's probably going to be, you can't do it in this way. Um, I think it's just to attract new talent. I think these types oh, of yeah. – every one of these instances has been – we need more people, so like we're gonna give you enough of a concept, and hopefully that's exciting enough for you because we haven't really established anything as other than like a genre, or maybe an idea, and that, and you're gonna help, you know, craft flush, and, and, flush and yeah, out, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah, and the hiring department, I'm sure, has been having a hard time right now, a little bit. So <laughs> yeah. the dehiring department, so you, is, you know, they, you need to yeah. give if you need people to work on that game, then you need to. Yeah, do so, something to tip the scales a little bit. Instead of keeping it secret for like years and struggling with the project, you're just like, you know what? Just 
just tell people about it. Like, yep. all of our games leak anyways. Yeah. But, you know, it's... It's a genre. Yeah. You know, it's it's, such, like, it's that not that much of a things. reveal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if we yeah. find out later and get a name or a character or the cast or so I hear a yeah. voice or get a little lore, we're not like, oh, that's a survival game. They already announced this. It's mm-hmm. like, no, we clearly have no, no idea what they're doing. Overwatch like branched off of something entirely yeah, different. Yeah, Project Titan. It was yeah. supposed to be an MMO. So, survival game today. Who knows what tomorrow? Yeah. Battle else. Royale tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is your call to adventure. Will you answer it? It's the end of the blog. It's just oh. so funny. I'm sorry. Every world needs builders. What if that could be you? Whoa. Someone who's like, has the know-how to be a VFX artist is reading this being like, you know, I never thought about making video games. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta start a blizzard? You're getting me all worked up. Who's played Crisis? I've played Crisis room. 1 and 2. One cool. And two. Cool. Never played 3. Nope. Never played yeah, 3. Yeah, no Crisis over here, Damiani. Just, just the memes. I think I might have seen yeah. it. Many memes. Crisis a little bit. How are those crisis memes doing in 2022? How are they holding up? Well, we're going to get new ones, right? Can you Hopefully. Re- yeah, for Crisis. Four. Four, yeah. Crisis four is officially in development. It's weird because on crisis.com, Crytek CEO Avni Yearly said, yes, a new Crisis game is happening. Doesn't call it four anywhere in the post, and the trailer says four. Yeah. So it's like, I'm sure oh, we'll call it something else, but I don't know. Crisis four. Maybe, boom, boom, yeah. Boom. Um. Tell me about Crisis, you two. Specifically, one and two. What do we think? Uh, Crisis, dude. When Crisis One was coming out back in the day, it was like, it was like a spectacle. <laughs> I distinctly remember people showing me screenshots that they, like, like real life Crisis <laughs> right, side right. by side kind of thing. I distinctly remember that shit. People were like, Crisis is gonna be the best thing ever, and it came out and I was like, it was fun. Yeah. It looked cool great shooter. at yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah, there's like some cool parts. Like the island was sick. You could run around it with your like powers and stuff. That was cool. But. Yeah, th- yeah. Well, the whole meme thing. Yeah, and, and I mean, you know, but it was based on fact. Is, yep. you know, can it run Crisis? Yeah, you know, it was the, it. yeah. It's a question for PC gamers because <laughs> yeah. it was one of those games where just like it was built for machines that don't exist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. um, it was just like graphics too. It was like all the physics stuff, right? Like, right, everyone right, right. would yeah, do like, it, like when you shoot a tree, like. Topples you over. You could like grab yeah. someone and everyone was like, whoa, dude, that's all like, I remember holding the guy those, by the those neck. Those low res <laughs> yeah. videos of like what yeah. you could do in that game. Yeah. I was just like, whoa, pretty cool. Yeah. How do you think the Crisis franchise has held up over the years? Uh, not in, in, too in, in well. This, in this yeah. blog post, they talk a lot about the cr- the, the, the the Crisis community. I know the mm-hmm. Crytek mm-hmm. community. I know the Engine community. I don't know. They did just put out uh, remasters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. I uh, last that. year, I think, and then and maybe maybe they crossed over last year and yeah. year before a little bit. But the uh, yeah, it's it's hard for me to say like what like the fan base is because again, like the original fan base for the first Crisis was like very hardcore PC yeah, gamers, PC gamers, and then Crisis Two they wanted to Consoles. broaden that out, so they you know they made it very controller friendly. I actually really dug the way. More uh, linear kind that, of thing. That game played. Um, mm-hmm. and it's like you're like super soldier, so you have like all these like augmented powers and stuff that like Maximum probably now power. if you you played it, it probably wouldn't stand out yeah. that much with all the, the speed dude the run future fast. warfare and other yeah things that whole wave we had later on. But at the time there weren't a lot of shooters doing all of that kind of stuff and, and like adding these extra abilities. Um, Crisis two still looked gorgeous. Mm-hmm. It was kind of mind blowing that like it looked that good on console uh, at the time. And then three, there was a bow. Uh, yeah, that's what <laughs> I, I was gonna say. That's what I know hey, about it. For me, baby, I don't, really know. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know where where it really went from there. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, two was also more like urban settings. Yeah, like it was the in the city. Crisis it's was like, like on that island jungle. Yeah. And this is like a real yeah. city. It's like New York, I think maybe. I'm not sure. We want to make sure the next installment in the franchise lives up to all your expectations. I worry. About their the expectations they have to deal with because it is you know if somebody who hasn't played it that's just all I know about Crisis is mm. it just it is the bar it, or, or it, yeah, was, it the was the bar. bar and it is synonymous with that and so like that's gotta be scary releasing new screen scra- screenshots new gameplay if they're their first tr- real tr- they're Crytek. they had a teaser that CG now it just shows the the you know it's very ballistic there's lots of particles in the trailer mm. yeah, yeah. but it just shows a four and then they're done but you remember like even outside of the Crisis games like that was one of the things that we hunted for mm-hmm. like every GDC we gotta get that Crisis trailer <laughs> yeah it would always yeah. Just, it was just tech demo stuff but yeah. it would just be mind blowing yeah. You know the footage. Is they Digital would put Foundry out there. excited for Crisis Four, or are they like? Oh, I'm oh, sure they're no. excited to dive I think, in. I think so. <laughs> yeah. I think so because they they did do analysis on those remasters. Yeah, I'm sure so they, they dug into it. it. 
It's interesting. Just in terms of the discourse. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, mentioning expectations, though. Yeah, if they expect, if they think everyone's expecting more like Crisis One or like that, mm. that technical showpiece, that's a. Uh, I mean, that's definitely something to shoot for. Yeah. The caveat is to be careful. Like the G- GPU market's shit right now. It's yeah. really hard to get good graphics cards, and a lot of people are moving away from PC gaming to trying to like. Getting back into console gaming because it's just such a nightmare to mm. have to pay four to five times the MSRP of a of a GP even on the lower end one. So high end gaming is a little bit out of reach for a lot of people. So while mm-hmm. this might they might achieve this, I worry about like you know who like is it only like hand, like a very small select group of people are going to get to enjoy that or with how far it's out maybe they're like we're mindful of that. I That's why it'll we're, con- we're it'll sh- be on consoles. Yeah. But if it's on consoles, yeah, we'll it'll be like f- PS5 only and Series X probably or mm-hmm. NES probably. Not yet. Yeah, I would expect it not to be like cross gen. Yeah, like this game's gen. years away. Yeah, yeah. It would. Oh have yeah, we won't even be talking about cross gen. Yeah. But then this comes yeah, out, hopefully, unless it's the next gen. Yeah, yeah, unless it's yeah, the pro like, model. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> or it's or PS6. Like yeah, that. there you go, bud. Ah, oh, good. but yeah, I mean, I think largely. Yeah, that one of the biggest things people are gonna be looking for is is just it to be like a level above graphically, mm-hmm. um, and to have those destructive elements like oh, we're yeah. talking about, yeah. like the trees, yeah, yeah, yeah. like just yeah, being yeah. able to blow the walls off of buildings. You know, deliver. just having a world that's like very, very dynamic. It needs to deliver what Crackdown Three was supposed to give us all in right. real time. Remember everything destructible, like oh, right we stuff like that, like, like, but, like with mode. current gen visuals. Imagine yeah. being able to that level of destruction yeah. and hold up like a, a yeah. rock solid frame rate, like. Like best destruction ever in a yeah, game. Yeah, that yeah. could be a big. Yeah, like thing. battlefield level stuff, but probably even further. Yeah, yeah. exactly. W- one thing that's uh, is interesting now is I'm seeing some developers. Uh, I remember Halo kind of did this, where they show, uh, like Halo did this as a joke because people didn't like it the first time we looked at it, but like where people will see demos. Dead Space. That's what I'm thinking of. The Dead oh. Space remaster showed like it in action right now. They're like, we're developing it. Here's this hallway, and mm. here's this one hallway compared to the old one, just to show you. And it was like. Neat. This has got to be really scary for developers to show us like a super early project, but at the same time, it's exciting to like, yay, we're involved and they're working on it. Good luck, team. Mm-hmm. Could Crisis do? Like, could they sure. really kind of have a hands on? Like, follow us on the website. We'll take you through all of the early testing of everything. Or is it like, no, 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 keep this in the can until it's perfect? No, no, no. I think th- I think that they probably will show stuff off. Yeah, judging by I would, this, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like uh, you remember how like Hellblade did all those like blog updates and mm-hmm. things like that oh, yeah. when they were going through their tech. I I think it could very easily go along those lines because Crytek they just again they love to show off their engine. Yeah. Um, and and make it you know to be like it's a big deal to, mm-hmm. to use CryEngine. So uh, yeah, I really I think that even if it's not like actual gameplay and and what the final game will look like, they'll probably put tech demos out there. Yep. Are you the same character in all three? No, I don't think so. I don't really know. I don't remember. The suit is definitely a thing. But uh, it's been is that so a, long but there's multiple played them. suits from what I is remember. that a problem that like nobody really Maybe. talks about Crisis guy like it's iconic if you showed me those red shades and like the well, I mean the, yeah, the like muscle bound suit Crisis I'd be like guy, yeah that's yeah. Crisis but like could you get Crisis guy in Fortnite would people care like is there any kind of brand awareness you can do in the next couple years before this is finished I mean I think the suit's pretty recognizable like, right. we'd all recognize it but is there like is a there like a s- character not that I'm aware of well like a story like am I excited for oh, Crisis Four because yeah. like whoa where are we gonna I go don't remember or story, like, I remember the story I really like, don't remember I remember something in one yeah. but I don't really want so why know. sell a story for a sequel because who, who remembers who cares like to make it actually memorable I guess mm-hmm. they're like oh we're missing that element yeah let's add something. But I don't know. We haven't played three, so who knows? I wonder. Yeah, I feel like I feel like three probably went more in that direction. Probably. Although it seems like they took things back into the jungles and stuff. Yeah. And if you're one of those people who is inspired by Crisis to get into development, <laughs> then why not come on work on the next chapter? We have some openings available on the team right now for people who will truly shape the future oh of God. the franchise. Damn. Crytech.com/slash/career. See, it's not about what we're doing right now. It's about the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You want to come in because the future is great. The future starts the day you come was, and work for us. I was also <laughs> super sick at that review event. It was like the worst thing. to For Crisis 1 or 2? For or? 2. Oh, for 2. Yeah, because like they had it set up with like this big TV and sound system and stuff in the hotel room. And then you'd go down to like a, like a ballroom or something for multiplayer sessions. I was just sick as a dog <laughs> and having to rush through because that's one of those ones where like we had to play the whole story at uh, the event. Oh, oh I had to do a Call of Duty. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I did a Call of Duty one of the yep. We've been there. 
Uh, how are those Crisis Remaster sales doing after this announcement? Do you I think? Do you think no people this idea. week are like, I know, Woo! It, I know it came out, but I've not. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Other than seeing digital, like it gets me it. more excited. But like this week though, following the Crisis Four announcement, you think a bunch of fans I were like, it'll get "All a right." Slight bump. Yeah. Builds excitement, even if it's years away. Uh, also mentioned in this, what's that other game Crytek's working on? I f- forgot. Oh, Hunt Showdown. Well, yeah. Yeah, Hunt Showdown. Cool game. They mentioned Hunt Showdown. I want to let Hunt Showdown players know that they have some great. Th- we have some great things planned for you too this year and beyond. So watch this space. Cool. Didn't ask for people to come work on Hunt Showdown. Maybe the dev team is locked. <laughs> locked in, yeah. But uh, loved everything I've done on Hunt Showdown, and just again one of those things like I yes, because like oh Crisis Four, what have they been doing? Thank you. They told us. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> but are like the same devs working on both of these projects? Be excited to see. Uh, well, I've had some other franchises update. out there too. Yeah, that Ocu- like the VR game. I think they had something like with. Maybe. So lots of things are in development. New projects are starting. New IP is starting. Mm. Star Wars ain't no new IP. That's an old one. That's an oldie. Right. Almost 30 years old, that Star Wars IP. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. And there's that respawn there, and they were working on a Star Wars game. I got nervous for a while, Brad. For a while there, they were just releasing videos of them, like, swinging green (laughs) sticks around. And I was like, you guys, let's let's let this game come together. Uh, Andrew Renick, who I love, was just hanging out with Vince in the audience. Like, you got a name? You got a name. Okay, let's go on with the press conference. Here's a logo. Here's the title. I'm scared for this game. And then comes along one of the best Star Wars games I've ever played in my life. And so satisfying. Uh, So Respawn's making other ones. Great. Yeah. Dude, it sold really well. Three. Response making they're three different Star two, Wars games. And they're like co publishing or developing one other Correct. one. Correct. Oh, let's go through the list. Um, and before you get through that list, apparently Dice is not working on a Battlefront. No, Battlefront 3 is not in the works. Uh, yeah, they never said it would be, though, did they? No, was... but people assumed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. After you would Battlefront. Assume Battlefront. That after, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I that don't takes know. That off going, the from, table, yeah. going from Battlefront 2 to Squadrons is kind of like. Oh, we're done, I guess. You know, it's like I, I don't know if we're gonna go from squadrons to Battlefront Three, or if they were like, let's do another space thing and call it. Like, mm. I don't know. It, I could see it going both ways. Um, bummer. Oh, we don't know what they're working on. I guess, right? Well, it just sounds like they're focused on Battlefield. Yeah. 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 Um, game one, Star Wars Game One from Respawn is the sequel to Jedi Star, Fallen Star Order. Wars Jedi something. Uh, Star Wars Jedi something. Got to admit, had to look up Cal Kestis's name. You didn't? You should have asked me. I, I, I was at my laptop. You were on stream team. I was in, in this room on my laptop, and I was like, I know it's BD a C one. and a K. BD one. I could probably have answered BD1, but I I, I hope people welcome back Cal. I love Cal. I love Cal. He's great. I, 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 I really liked where he ended up, um, and I just love that game. Mm-hmm. How are expectations set? Mine are sky high. Mine too, yeah. Yeah. Damian, Sequel, how are you feeling? I didn't, I didn't play it, but everyone around me just said that game was fantastic and seemed like the biggest no brainer. So I think expectations are going to be pretty it's high for this version. It's kind of like Spider Man, where it's good, yeah. but you think about the sequel and it's like, oh boy. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Probably you know, going like, to take all that feedback they mm-hmm. got yeah. and they're like, this is bump definitely it. Has a big chance to like bump it up. Be a dude. big one. Maybe even bigger budget. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Um, and before we get into all of this, Daniel Ahmad uh, actually got this through Matt Piscatello, who retweeted it, said on Twitter something. I was like, thank you for those stats. That's really, it's a good place to start. EA paid up to $455 million to acquire Respawn. 455 mil. <laughs> 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 great pi- At great the end pickup. of 2017, since 2018, launched and hit 100 mil uh, plus with Apex Legends players, launched and hit 20 mil players for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Both titles have grossed 2.5 bill combined. Yeah, what a so great pickup. So Respawn has been working super hard since the moment they got acquired and are just earning, 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 earning. Killer studio. So it makes sense. You're like, hey, how many Star Wars games do you want? Mm-hmm. Like, we'll take two for now, and then we'll see where that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> don't forget, these are the guys that are actually responsible for Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. these are like yeah. good, like crazy good yeah. developers. Activision just copied and pasted after you yeah, know, they got them. rid of them. So right. <laughs> they know what they're doing. Uh, also, shout out to Deborah Wilson, who is going to be um, uh, in Justice League. Uh, it killed the Justice League uh, as Amanda Waller. She came out of the Game Awards and confused yeah, everybody. She's in, uh, yeah. uh, but she's in Fallen yeah. Order, and just, yeah. just just in terms of the like yeah. the yeah. characters we recognize, Fallen Order is definitely one of those franchises. And so I'm like, yeah, the act. There were moments that I got like misty. I was like, <laughs> I know these people have like balls on them in some weird room and are spitting yeah. Star Wars lore <laughs> at me. They learned two days ago, but I'm emotional. Damn it. Uh, I'm very excited about that. Hell yeah. Game two, a new Star Wars FPS from Peter Hirschman. Sick. Who's Peter Hirschman? 
Uh, I don't know, but a respawn FPS, yes. That's Star Wars, yes. Yeah. Sure. Peter Hirschman is a first person shooter legend. Oh, what has really? Peter Hirschman done? Peter Hirschman was recently interviewed by Jeff Keighley oh. in one of his gigantic lit up stages that no audience could go to during oh, the pandemic. Dang. Uh, Peter Hirschman uh, did Medal of Honor, 1999's Medal oh, of Honor. He kicked the dude. whole thing off. He came nice. back and directed Above and Beyond, and he, that's what he interviewed. Man. So if you go back and find that Keeley, you're like, yeah, I remember that guy in his office being like, yeah, Medal of Honor. He was so excited. And Above and Beyond is supposed to be really great. He was VP of production on Empire at War Forces of Corruption, which mm-hmm. is the DLC for Empire at War, which mm-hmm. is the, the fun RTS, speaking of Star Wars strategy. Um, Playground of Destruction, Mercenaries Playground of Destruction in 2005, one of my yeah, favorite games Jones of all time Bay. that we just talked about on Tier Maker. Um, has a long storied history with Lucasfilm, is no stranger to juggling someone else's IP. He's been VP of Product Development on numerous Star Wars games and Indiana Jones games. Wow. So he's just like, like just the list just goes yeah, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Indie, 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 so Indie. Authentic. And they're like, yeah. dude, come in and just first person go. Like, whoa, mm-hmm. Medal of Honor guy. Mm-hmm. Like, is this going to be boots on the ground? Is this going to be Rogue One vibes? Is this going to. What do you I don't do? Know. What, I don't what, know. what are the Medal of Honor vibes like I, who are like of the, Star Wars? Yeah, who are like the elite? Are there any like elite like or Public Commando was kind of yeah. yeah, sure. Well, you, that, you yeah, played as it. Imperial troopers in Battlefront Two a lot mm-hmm. of it. Yeah, so I, I wonder, wonder if, if they'll this is the Battlefront Two campaign was a big oh. Empire thing to to you know move on from Battlefront. Is this if it's going to be multiplayer at all? I don't think yeah. it is. I don't think they. I think they said single player, but it could be. Could be. Like I would be surprised if it's not. I guess. Seems like a story focused thing, but could right. maybe have a co op. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. if yeah, if his past is dealing with Medal of Honor yeah. and stuff, but yeah, I would think he would have story. But you would also expect a first person shooter generally have to a have multiplayer. a multiplayer yeah. element. Yeah, you know? like I feel yeah. like it, no especially if they them. do have some kind of like squad, even if you just have to yeah. choose between the different like yeah. kind of could types of characters. Like that, yeah. yeah, I immediately thought of Dark Forces, but I don't think it will mm. be. But that just popped in my brain. Yeah, the thing that's great about Dark Forces is it's just one mission. Mm-hmm. Like there was a thing you're there to do, and you do it in the end of the game and get out. Yeah. You know, like and I, I miss that. Like a lot of even like Jet Fallen Order is like that's all over the place. Like yeah, you, you never really know why you're going to a new planet. Mm-hmm. So like it would be fun to. I think you could be a bounty hunter type. You could be a bounty hunter. Yeah, yeah, sure. Could be a Mandalorian. Game. Could be a oh, Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Yeah. Yeah. This is that canceled Boba Fett game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Game 3 is a strategy game via a publishing collaboration between Respawn and Bit Reactor. Who? They Bit actually Reactor. just announced the formation of that studio like the week before. Surprise! Oh. Uh, that's uh, uh, former Firaxis devs making, oh, okay. quote, oh, the future of turn-based tactics games. Oh, really? Sick. Dang. Turn-based that tactics is... Shots fired. Yo, yeah, that, that's a tall order a right there. A turn-based tactics Star Wars game? That sounds really cool. Blizzard Survival, New Crisis, Respawn Star Wars, the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds pretty Fraxis exciting. Fraxis is good, dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fraxis is good. Yeah, the former devs and, and people have been kind of waiting to see, like, yeah, where are they going to go and what mm. are they going to do? Resurface, announce the studio. Cool. And we're doing Star cool. Wars. Cool, good. Yeah. So they have good devs on this. Um, I would like as many different things to be in a Star Wars tactical game as possible. Mm-hmm. But like if you had to narrow it down, what would you maybe focus on? Like an era or something? It'd be fun to just place everybody. Like every oh, army, sure, every yeah. leader, every It depends like if it's gonna be like super story focused though. I don't Do know. Do a full on Civ. Just go from the old Republic all the oh, way. Yeah on. you could. Yeah. yeah. All those <laughs> alien races. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. Like I think of like XCOM for some reason about this. And I don't know if it's gonna be like that at all, but that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Do I want to invest in double blade lightsabers? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Throw them about thermal detonators? Yeah. Um, yes. But that's the, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, it's like, all right, you can have uh, 20,000 stormtroopers or <laughs> three Jedi. Yeah. yeah, that's all you need. <laughs> that's all you need. Be able to buy Java's Palace. Dude, yeah. Uh, you like them tactics there, Isla, and you were very excited when I mentioned yeah. Firaxis. How are you feeling about the future of turn based tactics games? I mean, yeah, XCOM or, oops, that's your camera. XCOM or, I mean, we, it remains to be seen what Midnight Suns will be like, but. Yeah. Oh, we did see gameplay of that. The weird gameplay system, like very small yeah. crew. And right. I saw a lot of people, there were like cooldowns that I saw mm. a lot of RTS fans were like, no, I don't like that. Yeah, like Star Wars XCOM or tactics ju- fans. on its own would be sick. So like, yeah, I, I whatever they want to do, I guess. The Bad Batch, the Bad Batch. Oh, oh. the Four Order 66. Oh, yeah. Kind of fun. There's like an achievement to survive Order 66. Yeah, Can like, you make it through? It's like video game party members, them themselves. Yeah, yeah. The big tank, the medic. Or the, I mean, the other direction it could be is like 
Star Wars Civ. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Which would like, be sick. Go, like, it's funny. Be Clone Wars. Wars or Galaxy something. of Heroes introduced yeah, me to the Bad, Bad Batch because yeah. I still haven't watched oh, that sorry, show. Yeah, yeah. And I remember them from the last mm-hmm. season. Yeah. But I like it was funny like Galaxy of Heroes like and now this Bad Batch guy. And I'm yeah. like, oh yeah, I remember <laughs> Tech Dude. Yeah, Hunter. he's fun. Is there any Star Wars game where you get to like see like the entire like kind of like known like galaxy or whatever like they show like the outer rim and everything and empire like, war kind of because i'm I guess, like i think ambition here yeah, like right. being able to have that scale yeah where you go to all like the different planets and i mean stuff and, like it's on the table star wars feels messy they just like invent a new thing all the time right. so it's hard for me to right. say i mean basically we we have three trilogies now where we've seen three villains mm-hmm. some trilogies the same villain or you know yeah uh, depending if you want to get into the spoilers and stuff we're like they always try to take over the universe be fun if it was like some tactics game where like you were the emperor, you were the empire, and it's like good luck, go for it. Oh, you know, I like, love that. You got to make hard decisions. You got to figure you out what planets you want to just completely destroy, and like what in old, the, can you rule now? Legends. All of it. Yeah, yeah. the like legends bringing canon? like legend stuff like beyond yeah. the galaxy. They kind of got like, stuff like mm-hmm. legend stuff in. They like take some ideas yeah, from legends already. That might be cool. Yeah, sure. They could do like earlier stuff, or they can do something completely weird. I think they'll keep it pretty. Things we recognize though. It'd be crazy, like yeah, High Republic or would be they, silly, right? Since they said future or whatever, now I'm thinking like, okay, it starts as like a light forex, and mm-hmm. then you take over a planet and it becomes like a light sieve, but then you get into a skirmish and it becomes like a light XCOM, mm. and it's like literally everything. It just drills down and it's got all of it. That'd be kind of wild. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting if it's like a, a platform that they can maybe add chapters onto and not just like one big release and then they're done. Yeah, yeah. sounds pretty but, modern. Um, but um, yay, more Star Wars games. Yeah. We're thirsty in dire need. For like I think. really good ones, yeah. Well, good ones, yeah. But there are many, many Star Wars games in development. They're coming. And now, a word from our sponsors. If you have multiple credit card balances each month and are only paying the minimums, barely making a dent in your credit card debt, it can be discouraging. Upstart can help you pay off your existing debt quickly so you can feel like you are finally getting ahead. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Upstart knows you're more than your credit score, so rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model considers considers other factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate without impacting your credit score in just five minutes. I have not gotten a loan from Upstart, but I have checked that credit score. I first got that text and I was like, five minutes? It was quicker than five minutes. Thank you, Upstart. For loans between $1,000 to $50,000. If Upstart and the Easy Allies podcast can help people sort out their finances, it would make me very happy. You can even receive funds fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash easy allies. That's upstart.com slash easy allies, one word. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. That's upstart.com slash easy allies. Whether it's saving more and spending less, getting organized or losing weight, there's a lot of worthwhile goals to set for yourself this year. And at the top of your list should be learning a new language with Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Not only learning a new language, not only is learning a new language fun and engaging new hobby, you can use it while you check off traveling more from your list. The whole Babbel process is addictively fun. It's games, man. Games are fun, fast and easy. Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons for real world use. I love you. You've been checking out Babbel lately. I am I'm learning Espanol. Yeah, I've been trying Babel. to learn uh, Norwegian. I'm learning better Espanol. I got to Spanish three in high school, but that was <laughs> that was a bit ago. Somewhere in between now and when Return of the Jedi came out. Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn new language on the go. Another language learn other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, video stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use promo code ALLIES. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Code ALLIES. B-A-B-B-E-L. Babbel. Um... 
Go to Babbel.com, use code ALLIES to get three months of Babbel with a three-month subscription. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like having a first aid kit, but not keeping it stocked up. Most of the time you'll probably be fine, but what if you suddenly get into a horrible accident and there's nothing in your first aid kit to, keep, to help you stop the bleeding? What if you have a horrible accident? Oh my God. Every time you connect to an un unencrypted network, cafes, hotels, airports, any hacker on the same network can gain access to your personal data. You can tell him he's got the evil shades on. <laughs> while you're in that market. It doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack somebody, just some cheap hardware is needed. A smart 12-year-old could do it, which means I got nine and a half years to teach Milo not to hack people. Your data is valuable. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling personal info on the dark web. ExpressVPN creates an encrypted tunnel. It creates a secure tunnel between your device and the internet. Hackers have a much harder time stealing your sensitive data. Works on all devices, phones, laptops, tablets, and more. So you can stay secure on the go with Easy Allies. I've used ExpressVPN on multiple devices uh, to access things in other regions. This is just another boon of ExpressVPN. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash allies. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash allies. And you can get an extra three months free, expressvpn.com slash allies. And if you are a patron of Easy Allies, thank you. Xbox gave me a list. No, it was Blizzard. Sorry, I lied. Blizzard gave me this list that I love. It was like Netties, and we were talking about Netflix, oh, and, right, right. and that's where Alibaba, the correction, came from. All these companies that we're starting to learn, these are the big ones. These are the big wigs that people are afraid of. Netties was on that list, and it's a company I don't think about that often. And this week, they said, quote, they were delighted to announce the establishment of Nogoshi Studio, Inc. in Tokyo, mm. Japan. Toshihiro Nogoshi, former producer of the Yakuza series, has taken up the post of representative director and CEO of the studio, along with experienced developers, many of whom worked on iconic video games. The studio will focus on developing high-quality console titles that will be released globally. I'm a big fan of the Annie Leibovitz wide shot of a new development company. Mm -hmm. I love just all yeah. of them in a room. Standing like, there. We haven't released a single game yet. What's <laughs> up? You know, I, lo I love that energy. <laughs> We're going to take as long as we want. Um, how excited are you about, this was like a, a while coming, right? That we finally, what, we, we know he left, but what we is he doing? Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, we know he left. We don't really know. Why? Why? That's well, still like this. Oh, he he's... left because they decided to get him his own studio. Because <laughs> Nettie's <laughs> well, I mean, got him on the horn. Yeah, but like, what, you know. He's probably what? burnt out working on Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, no, the, the thing is, everyone now expects him to make like another similar series. Like, I see people like, he's going to make triads or something. Is what's going to be called. I'm like, okay. Oh, like, God. It's like, fine. Like, that's, I don't know if that's really that's... what he wants to do, but he's apparently. Unless I heard this wrong, I thought he was like also taking some of the other some of the talent from yeah, the yeah. existing studio yeah. with them. So right. they obviously About have eightish people or something. I think that's on the staff page. Yeah, so I feel like they have some kind of like loose idea that they want to do there. Whether or not it is, I mean, I, I don't know. Like it seemed like everything seemed to be fine at Sega yeah. with them working. Like yeah, because it was going great. They lost ju like the Judgment series taken off, and it's like. What did was there anything there? Or was it like amicable? I have no idea. Like, yeah. I have no idea what happened there. And then they're doing this, but like, this seems to be. I'm very curious to see what they're working on, and mm -hmm. I hope it's whatever they want to work on. And it'd be amazing to see them do something that wasn't literally just Yakuza yeah, again. Me too. And two, this seems to be a like more common trend now with a lot more uh, Japanese developers losing talent and not yeah. just necessarily being poached by another major company, but going off to start their own studio. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 like, for whatever reason, growing up and like you know being in Nintendo, being in like and into like Final like Final Fantasy, the thing with developers are always told like oh they stay at a Japanese company for like forever, like for they're they're there for yeah. life. And like past like 10, 15 years, it seems to like the, a lot of the developers have been breaking that mold. Yep. And there are interesting to see, yeah. so many newly created companies that just do not at all get brought up on this podcast because they'll see it. Like GamesIndustry.biz mm -hmm. does a great job of posting mm -hmm. that stuff. Of just like, oh, neat. Like, yeah, these people seem talented because they worked at this company, but then they're going off and we're not going to hear from them for a while. But to me, this stands out because obviously of, like you're saying, this, this seems like somebody who has a lot more fun things to do. Mm -hmm. It's just hard at this moment to guess can we maybe narrow it down to third person action game? You know, like we don't know the genres well, or what does your also, gut tell you? Well, no, he was also involved with the uh, soccer wars. Yeah. Right. The, what did they monkey ball too? Oh. They made monkey ball. Yeah. DX. Like he's done oh. a lot of stuff. Like it's not just that. That's why <laughs> oh, there's it. a lot of cool possibilities. Which yeah. I like, hope. Oh, this is where it's going to go because, you know, some of those entries would be, I mean, be nice to see them branch out. Mm -hmm. But the other part of it for me is 
as I just said, there have been more and more of this, the, the instances, of, instances of this happening. Not all of them end up with a fairy tale ending. Some of them have, you know, kind of like, kind of faltered. And mm-hmm. you kind of see, like, maybe it wasn't so much the one person or even a few people were responsible mm-hmm. for being bringing those older games that we know and love to to life. It was more of a team effort, and like it might need they might need more resources. So, um, yeah, very. I, I my gut says this is probably going to go in a better direction oh. with, 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 with this, hopefully. But I mean, I'm thinking of like you know, like when a. Uh, like a Balan Wonderworld, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh, yeah. stuff like that. Yuji Naka or KJ Inafune leaving, and I was going to say with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there there definitely been a yeah, few that Inafune's have been, been a little, little yeah. rough. There's been some that have departed and they haven't worked out. There's some who have moved on to other studios and it has worked out perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like a. Uh, with uh, Mistwalker and yeah. uh, Sakaguchi's yeah, team, like they might yeah. not have been as successful as any Final Fantasy game, but man, they turn out brilliant work. With the yeah. most recent one, Fantasian, like being right. like you know, looks even gorgeous. what Terra Battle was that the first yeah, one? That was, yeah. Yeah. that was when I met Sakaguchi, and like he was so excited. And yeah. It was just this weird mobile game, and he was like, "Wait, dude, let's play together." Right. And I played me, whooped me. I'm like, ah, oh. there's he looked like he was having a blast. What a pleasure! Or, you know, like, like yeah. uh, Igarashi leaving too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Iga. Yeah, they're doing fine. I guess. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. A lot more room for those, like not necessarily triple A yeah. studios. And I think, yeah, one of the differences here compared to like Miss Walker or, or Inafune or, or something is they have the backing of yes. Netty. Lots of money. Yes. It's a gigantic yeah. company that's just like, hey, we want you to basically do what you've been doing, uh, yeah. and we're going to fund you to do that. Cool. And so it, it'll be really interesting. And again, there's another story where, like, we need to hire people. Yep. Yes. They're going to be hiring a lot of people to make uh, this game. So uh, whatever their first triad game might be. in three years. New triad game. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. As far as these three draws that we've seen, you know, people coming over to NetEase and Negoshi Studio, people potentially working on uh, the new Crisis, or people working on Blizzard's game, what would you, where would you want to go? <laughs> All these people being like, yo, oh, today's sure. the first day. Come on in. Where are we going? Yeah, I guess without any any language barriers. You gonna go work for Peter Hirschman? Yeah. Where are we going? Crytek is Germany, <laughs> All right? Yeah. Um, yeah, Blizzard's pretty close to me, so okay. right. Maybe yeah, you, that'd be pretty. That'd be a pretty yeah, easy pretty, break in terms sweet, of lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, cool to go to negotiate studios. Maybe. Yeah. Just yeah. because, like, if they're if they are working on something different. Yeah. I mean. Least, yeah. Seems like, cause at least Star Wars seems like it's kind of a known quantity what we're getting. Sure. Survival, like, uh, could be anything, whereas this is like, okay, yes, this could be anything too, but the possibilities here seem a little yeah, bit more exciting crazy. to me. I can, like, hear us Optimistic. react to the Negoshi <laughs> Studio logo at, like, some <laughs> I'll be like, two no, years from now. We're it'll like, be Negoshi Studio. Oh! <laughs> it'll be, the logo pop up and no one will know what that is, and yes. Blood will be like, oh, it's this guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Helps have people's names in there, you know? It's like, ah, that project. VR. It's exciting. Lots of exciting things happen in VR. Uh, One of my favorite games last year was Resident Evil 4 VR. Love that Oculus Quest. Not as excited about possibly having a Meta account or a Facebook account. Whatever I need to access my Oculus. Meta, like, launched a thing this week and posted a trailer that I can't get out of my brain. (laughs) And I I have to bring this to the podcast. I'm sorry. They're, Meta has a thing now called Horizon Worlds. It used to be called Horizon. I, I, this was not the Horizon I was looking forward to this year. <laughs> and I, I think I might have known when it happened. It started two years ago, and it is just now opening access. It's finally coming out this week. They released a new big trailer for it um, that is hilarious that you should go check out. The Verge calls Horizon Worlds Roblox meets Oasis. <laughs> it's but- like- I don't even know what the crap Oasis like, is. Like Oasis, like Grezzo's Oasis. In all caps, no, Oasis in all caps. Man. Oh, that's the thing from Ready Player One. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. But Sorry, it's Oasis just means meets so Roblox. It's like isn't Roblox? <sighs> yeah, yeah it's hard to. Uh, if you're listening to this podcast and you live in the U.S. or Canada, it's out. Just jump in. It's free. You can go check that out if you got the the Oculus there. You do need a Facebook account though. In this, you can hang out with up to 20 people at a time. Wow, 20? 20 That's people, dude. Wow. Up to 20. And they're like in the room with you, like wow. in VR, and you're all talking to each other. Um, with no legs. No one has no legs. legs. Oh, my God. There are no legs. <laughs> arms. There are arms. No legs, though. And um, torsos. And there's got some torsos. Um, they don't look nearly as good as in the game as they do in the trailer that you're seeing. Oh, like the nice really? CG trailer of them the walking around. Yeah, well, yeah. it's clearly like an, you know, she's 
She's like looking at the camera and talking. It's like that. Yeah. They, that's not sure. real time capture. <laughs> like they clearly animated her to look good. It'd um, be great if her like you know if they did the connect thing and her like arms kind of clipped through her shoulder or something. <laughs> they had a preview event for this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Can oh, you yeah. Ab- can you imagine that? I'd be very uncomfortable. Oh, I'm imagining. It can now. you imagine putting on the Oculus headset for a preview event and just waiting, and then all of a sudden like boop, like the preview person comes in. Hi everyone. It's Mark Zuckerberg. Hey. I'm like, ah, yeah. Welcome everyone to the thing. No legs, you know. Like yeah. you're, you're looking at all the other devs who are like all the other you know journalists who are like, I don't want to be here in this physical yeah. space, but I didn't have a choice, I guess. Isn't VR cool? One person's just like a rake. They're like, I didn't want to put my per- <laughs> my face no, yeah. into this game yeah. and hang out with you. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> I know it wasn't this, but you know what, Jones, this is opening my eyes. Maybe I need to like find a way because I want I want like an E three level event in this now. What? I want to go play games. I Hopefully meet, we'll like, get there. And everyone gets to pick their own little avatar to be there. Yes. It's I worth like saying, it. Michael Damiani, you have problems with VR. Yeah, the motion. This is all about is virtual it. spaces. It's like we want to go into VR because you can be in the space and you can go to the space. Do you do you care? Like your friends that can do like, VR, do you think they care? Like I don't How know do we feel about do? virtual spaces in 2022? I, I feel like it's a curiosity for most people. And, and I think it's still kind of a novelty at this phase mm. for what this is specifically going for. And if you have the means, like the financial means to jump in on this, like I think people just like dabbling in it. I just don't know how like the long-term investment to something like this. It's like, I feel like it's something you do in like you do this for like an hour, 30 minutes, like in every day. And like, yeah, that's a fun thing I did. But like, is it going to be anything more meaningful? But the social interactions, I think, like, it seems a little, like, 20 people, I don't know, it seems limited right now. And it, it, maybe in a few years, if it's still around, it could According evolve According to something. The Verge, in the beta, oh, gosh. thousands of beta testers, thousands, thousands, have held regular comedy shows, movie nights, and meditation this sessions. This is not new in VR. Yeah. This is not new. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like... But it's Facebook and Meta, so it'll be bigger than ever. Yes, this is home. And yes, it didn't work for Sony, but it's going to work for Facebook. But like VR chat's doing that still right yeah, now, and it's yeah, super popular. Yeah, that's a good point. This, yeah, uh, this tech is yeah, this stuff has been around for. And it's like in VR chat, you could be whatever the hell you want. You could be some weird monster. You could be Banjo Kazooie in that game if you want. Or in that it just thing. looks so goofy, and like I, 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 don't, I, 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 I just it, it's like you're talking about the Oasis. I'm like, at least that like looks. Like really good in the movie form. Sure. Like it's never like there's, that's there's, like decades away from looking like that. You've probably. got legs in and it. like where's the ho- you, do you know have what? Legs. I'll be interested in this when it's the freaking holodeck. Okay. When it's the holodeck, I will care about this mm-hmm. type of stuff where okay. I can interact and touch things. Okay. Like <laughs> right. just looking around, it's like you know, it, like that type of illusion. I don't know. Like this, I think AR is going to get faster to what you're talking about than VR. Exactly. Like I'm that's, really excited I'm about more AR. I'm excited about that, that than anything with mm-hmm. VR because it, it's just I don't know. It feels cheap. To me, is the the Facebook cheap? <laughs> I mean, they're spending all this money, but like it still looks so cheap. I mean, you, it, you it, know what it looks like to me? It 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 looks like uh, uh, Connect games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it does have that. <laughs> they look like Connect Sports and Connect. It looks like the Xbox ride. avatars. <laughs> they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, what problem is this trying to solve? I know. And like, who is this? Fo- who wants this? I can't... They just think well, that, that nobody's done it yet. Right. That's right. the problem. That's what I kept thinking, I Isla, when I was watching the, the trailer. For this. The I was demographic. Like, like, I was like I who's think this blonde fine. woman talking to? Like, I, it's not I, talking I'm to me. Su- I'm surprised that like PlayStation VR hasn't had anything like this because they did have like I oh, saw yet. I saw GDC. I wouldn't be surprised if they bring you know they had this kind of thing. But like Astrobot's where you should go if you have PSVR. Like it's immediately what you should do. You shouldn't do anything else but play that game first and then try other things. Right, but I'm just being like again like a social interaction kind of thing. We're like, right. hey, we're all hanging out in the space together and having fun and messing around with things. And this is cool. There I, yeah. I have seen I do know friends in the VR space that have had like a ton of VR conferences that like work in a company that's around the world. And so like once a month or maybe every other week, the company will get together and like, ah, we all look stupid in VR, but they look stupid in VR. Like they all accept like, this is just a business thing and we're all kind of chuckling through it. Whereas like, I don't know, Meta's like, no, no, this is, yeah, like, that's the thing. your kids are going to love this. I feel like Meta is taking it too seriously. Like, uh, well, it's a very silly trailer, but well, at the same time they are. Yeah. Plus. You have to be 18 plus to play it apparently. Well, that brings us to the other issue, <laughs> that at least one beta, beta tester was like, oh, well, there's that one time where I got groped and I didn't want to. That sucked. Oh. Mm-hmm. And uh, nice. Vivek Sharma, the a- a- Meta's, Meta's VP of Horizon, was like, well, you can block people, and that user didn't know how to block people. 
so it's their fault. But like they're like they're like you can you can there are tools that you have and and actually Vivek said quote that's good feedback for us because I want to make the blocking feature trivially easy and findable. Like I want it to be something that anybody coming in mm. 18 years or otherwise is like ah okay I know what my security limitations are. Because again, in VR, hey, well, I'm that's in your so VR old room. It's way like, of thinking like like you leave it on the user to like just block after the fact. Like, right. why wouldn't you be more proactive and be like, a, if a user when a user set up, it'd be like, I just want to check a setting where like no one can try and physically interact with me. So like even on their end, if they're trying to do something, it doesn't represent it in VR. So like they can't do that. I, I mean. But again, it's meta, so I don't know. Well, how. <laughs> I, I don't have. I'm surprised, actually, Damiani, how much VR I can take. Like I've kind of pushed that boundary a little bit. Like I definitely, when I first tried VR, it was, it was, it was, wasn't as easy as it is now. I still don't want stuff on my face. I still like as good as Half Life Alex was. Like after two hours, I'm like, I, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I'm like, so done. Tiring, right? And it's just yeah. the, the whole vibe of meta is like, I'm drinking my coffee. That gal over there is flying a plane, yeah. and it's like, get to work, I'm people. What are you doing? Like, chilling in Meta. Yeah, I mean, well, my cereal, but thing I can't too, see where, it. Like, she had mentioned somebody, and then like her husband like yells at the person over her shoulder. Like, can he? Can they hear <sighs> that? Can they hear it, everything yeah, that's happening in your yeah, house? Yeah, like, yeah. it's super bad humor. It's just, a, it's just, a, it's a super off tone launch of a product yep. that I don't think people care about. That Meta's going to spend a lot of money on. Right. I hope it falls off the cliff like and, like Home and. did. <laughs> I hope it's a big failure for Meta, and we can all. But laugh here's at it. the thing: Meta will will find a way to make their stats <laughs> sound way better than they are, right. and just keep it going. Well, that's what's so confusing because it's like. Okay, yeah, Home did this, Second Life did this, they're, like, Zoom, this is solving a problem. Second Life is still doing this. Yeah, but, like, Roblox is huge, Mm -hmm. but, like, yeah, it's just such a weird attempt at an intersection of stuff that already happened and either failed or is really niche, and a thing that's really big but so different from this that it's not this enough to make it happen. It's so weird. Yeah, I feel like people just still have not solved, like, what is the the answer to make VR a thing? Like a big thing. Mm. Like there have been good experience. Obviously, like last year's Half Life, Half Life Alex. Like there have been meaningful experiences. And it just, I just, I think the reason maybe they're coming back to this because oh maybe text advanced out. We tried that old thing again. It didn't work before. Yeah. Now it's gonna work this time because our text better. But it's like, I I don't think you're really addressing what the root of the problem is. Like maybe this is just not how people want to do it. Like they're never gonna see it as yeah. more than like the, this novelty. So I, I don't know. I think they're just having trouble like trying to like solve the root plot problem and uh, yeah like it's hard to put in words because i don't want to be mean the meaning to vr because like i've said there's been like good stuff about it but like this has been like a song and dance that's been going for for me for decades that it's like it's never gotten any bigger than it's ever been like and even no, I think even valve i mean sorry yes. it's, it's, it's growing it's but like right, yeah. These people have bigger ambitions. I think they're, it's never going to get to that point with I what agree. they're doing. Like they're they're, they're like right. I think they're out of their minds. Like yeah. where do you get off? What what historical data even points to this trend going this way anytime? Like you're just well, doing this for the sake of doing it at this point because you have a lot of money. Right. It feels like it, like crypto or whatever. It's like th- we've have a solution to a thing that we already had a solution for, and we've invented a thing because there's no real problem that we're trying to solve. And it's like yeah, I think that they just. Or this thing is for a demographic that is so different from our own True. that I just have we can't even picture it. Like if this is for like, yeah. uh, just whatever random like moms or something, you know, like something that I am very foreign to. I don't know. Also, it was I was watching the, this. I was watching the trailer trying to answer that question. I like couldn't do it. I was I, I was literally like I'm like I don't understand what demographic you're shooting for in right. this. Like not that you're shooting for one poorly. I literally don't know where this lands. Like it's so exactly like I don't know who. Yeah, this base question: Who is this for? But in their minds, I have to imagine it's like they they ha- the only logical explanation I can think of is the first person to solve this. Like they want to be the it person. Right. Like because when, then they've got it. They are the first in it's, like we did it. We're the big we're, we're the we're, we're the kings of this. It's like this everyone will race follow. Yeah. We had a bad version of it around yeah. when it became it, it, popular. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. whoever is the first to nail this and it yeah. blows up, they're in at like at ground zero. Like that's what like as you said like with crypto like we're the big ones. We got it like we're there. That's why everyone was trying well, to get into it. It's like it's like Stadia, right? Where it's like yeah, yeah okay, clearly that's yeah. where we're going. You're just too early because the infrastructure is not there. And like your your insight about the holodeck, like, is kind of right. Like, yeah, metaverse. This shit will be the thing. This will be how we do it Eventually. in t- fifteen years when we have 
where you don't have to wear a bunch of stuff or you can just wear glasses. Like, right. mm. you know, like that'll be it. But we're not there yet. Exactly. Stadia is something at least I understand that someone in probably the next 10, I mean, I think X-Cloud, time comes a little different. Like like, any of that I think in the next it. 5, 10, 15 years at most, that is going to, someone's going to have it. It's probably going to be Microsoft yeah, with it's X-Cloud. Be Microsoft. Probably. It's going to be X-Cloud and guess. Game Pass and it's going to be Netflix of gaming and it's going to be great. But this but stuff like, is still so, yeah. it's too out of reach it feels like. I understand, uh, let me d- back up and say one thing to defend it a little bit. That the innovation and like creativity to like to think like this, I still think you need people like that who mm-hmm. are thinking big like that because you have to start somewhere. It's just when marketing people take over and turn it sure. into this is the like yeah. this needs to be behind closed that's, doors. That's and where like, we're at this week. Talking to investors <laughs> yeah. and stuff right. about how exciting this will be in in the decades to come, not publicly facing to consumers. It's here for you now. Like yeah, yeah. you are way too soon. It's like but way they too need, soon. But they need consumers to test it. That's so, yeah. That's true. Real. So yeah. yeah. Maybe. Get in there, consumers. It's Test just it. another avenue for them to make money in. Like they're they these people are thinking about like how can we make money in this new space, this right. new digital Again, space. Right. Yeah. Like, like when you got Bobby Kotick talking about the fucking metaverse, it's like that's what they're thinking about. They're not yeah. thinking about the user experience of making sick stuff. They're, they're wanting like, to sell islands money. and stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah. A digital like that's what they're thinking about. Like digital real estate. This, this is yeah. This and NFTs there's like go hand in hand for me. Like someone is. The, they're trying to figure out who's the first one to get this correct, and yeah. it like right. works for everyone. You win. You won the game. I just like to point out, I was not the first person to bring crypto or NFTs to this podcast episode. Yeah, what me? Sorry, what me? Yeah, begrudging. We're sorry. Not another time. We just live in ridiculous times. We you do know? ridiculous. Let's follow that money, Brad Ellis. Okay. With the December NPDs, Ooh, these actually whoa. dropped. These whoa. actually dropped on the 18th. We should have covered them last week, oh, okay. but there was I don't know something a little important oh, that happened yeah, last yeah. week. We should maybe spend most of the podcast talking about. I've managed to fit in Brad Ellis and Star Wars yes. into this and the last episode. Very proud of that. Thank you, Matt Piscatella, Executive Director and Industry Advisor in the MPD Group, who pointed out all of these great... I got the I got the 20 of the December and I got the 20 of the year, but he pointed mm-hmm. out a lot of interesting things that we can... Do you want, do you want the interesting things or just want to hit yeah. the list first? Sure. The interesting things Interesting first. things first. Then we can drop down a list. Overall monthly spending fell 1% when compared to a year ago to 7.5 bill. 2021 consumer spending reached a record 60.4 bill, 8% wow. higher when compared to 2020. So, yay, we did wow. a bit better. Still hard to buy those consoles, but people are still out there sp- uh, spending money. December oh. hardware sales declined 3% compared to 2020 to $1.3 billion. Despite the December declines, full year 2021 and hardware spending cyberpunk. reached <laughs> 6.1 bill, gaining 14% compared to 2020. So, we're, we're up yeah. overall. Uh, Nintendo Switch was December 2021's best-selling hardware platform in units sold. Switch and PS5 effectively tied for dollar sales. Hmm. So we're just okay. raking in the, the money. Uh, they were and Switch did a lot better than tied. units sold. Right. <laughs> um, and Nintendo Switch led 2021 hardware in both unit oh, yeah. and dollar sales. Yeah. They won the year. Good job, Nintendo Switch. Uh, t- what was December's best-selling game? Call of Duty. Call of Duty Vanguard, yeah. of course. <laughs> Call of Duty ranked as the best-selling franchise in dollar sales for a record 13th consecutive year. I think they won the month for the 13th year, but they also won the year it's for crazy. the 13th year. That's what they do. Damn. What was number two? Best-selling game? Yeah, Call of no. Duty. No. Oh. For December. Oh, for no, December. No, yeah, for, for 20, yeah. Halo. Halo oh, Infinite. Infinite. Right. Second best-selling game in December. Halo Infinite ranked as December's best-selling Xbox, also leading sales among titles on PC. Um, and it's down here at the bottom, but I think it was the best, it was the best Halo ever. It was the, it was the best Halo launch ever. Uh, yeah, yeah there's like 20, 20 million. million they just no. announced, yeah, on yeah, the Microsoft sales call. That's without considering Game Pass, right? Uh, that's just probably u- active just users. users. That's users. Users. Yeah, so no, that's, sales. Sales. that's also bundling in free to play, free to play, multiplayer, stuff. all yeah, that yeah. stuff. But NPDs, though, is the not NPDs. Bad. Yeah, the NPDs yeah, is yeah, just, sales. just sales. Yeah, it's just units. So yeah. that's really good. Yeah. Uh, NPDs. Dollar sales, not unit sales, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Sometimes he specifically does say unit. Yeah. Uh, to specify. Number three on that December list there. We're talking about big franchises. Sports we game. Got, now we got Call of Duty. What's another big Grand money Theft maker? Auto? They make that money. What else makes Mario Kart? Battlefield? No. These Battlefield? all make money. Battlefield? What makes the most, though? Of anything. Of anything? Ever. Ever. Game sales. Like, you think of, like, money making versus other metrics. So it'd be like Minecraft. Start saying like Genshin Impact. Give you a hint. They made two of them. The franchise so good they released two of them. Oh, oh and Brilliant yeah. Diamond and Shining Pearl. Oh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining oh. Pearl, third best-selling oh, title really? of December 2021. Oh. Uh, Diamond Pearl ranked first on Nintendo platforms for both December as well as the year. First. Is that still physical only? 
Um, Nintendo only reports physical. They don't do eShop to... So that's the, crazy. Yep. It's uh, probably like way up there. We'll there. get the full number at their quarterly yeah. report. Well, here's a... Th- here's, here's a... Not a number necessarily. 2021 dollar sales of the Pokemon franchise physical software reached the highest annual total in 21 years since 2000. Woo. That franchise is doing okay. Oh, yeah. Now Arceus comes out tonight. Yeah, you got Arceus. That thing's going to sell a lot, too. There's your, <laughs> yeah. there's your January winner yep. right there. That was uh, a weird moment when you said 21 years. I was like, wow, since like they started. And then you said 2000. I was like, oh, right. <laughs> we're old. Uh, this franchise reached dollar sales that were a new all-time annual high for the U.S. market for this franchise in 2021. And it ended, the game in this franchise, ended 2021 as the eighth best-selling game. And I think it sucks. Oh, oh Resident Evil Village? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. It's so oh, yeah. Damn, it's so I'm just That's giving so you clues. Weird. No, I, I play that game four times. Love that game. Um, uh, wow. Res- yeah. Resident Evil's nice. never made more money in the U.S. in a year. Nice. Yeah. That's great. Good year for them. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That Lady didn't D, DLC, baby. Then you have DLC it. Lady yeah. Dollars, you know? We got DLC dollars. coming this year. I hope they can take it. I'm down for RE to take a break. I don't need another. I don't need RE9 it's right not, away. I don't, you it's know, not like, taking a break. Uh, I don't even I need it. I feel a, like you're getting. You're getting the four, four remakes, remakes soon. and you're getting nine, and then they might take a break. Okay. <laughs> don't forget about REverse. I think that thing that thing's gonna be I yeah. that, thing is, that thing is gonna be canceled. It's gonna be canceled. What about that? Uh, get out of here. What about that Has Switch you game? Played it? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> what uh, if they fold Reverse into the Metaverse? No. <laughs> yes, actually, that's where it belongs. Yeah, the it's Ari, a world. The yes. Meta Reverse. It'll look better. In Same there. audience. Meta uh, was the ninth best-selling game of 2021 of the whole year. Mario Mons- Kart. Mari- uh, uh, Huber's oh. not here to celebrate it. Huber would be happy. That this sports game was the ninth MLB best-selling the game of 2021. Really? Wow. Ranked fifth on PlayStation, 18th on Xbox, but digital sales are not included on Xbox. Platforms. And it was on Game Pass. And multi-platform. MLB The Show 21. Studio. I know. It's is crazy. the well, best-selling baseball of... game in video game Jeez. history. Damn. Big. Big. Mm. Yeah. So when you talk, well, see, that's the thing. It's like everyone's like when Elder Scrolls, of course, Elder Scrolls Six is going to be on PlayStation. It's like, okay, <laughs> is Elder Scrolls Six going to sell more Xboxes than it would have sold units on PlayStation? I don't think so. Yeah, but well, I don't know. Maybe it's an image thing. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, think, uh, I don't know. How much people? How many do people really love Elder Scrolls? We'll see. Seven of the top twenty best-selling games mm-hmm. of 2021 also ranked among the top twenty bestsellers of 2020. Seven of the twenty. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Just yeah. came right on over from last year. Mario Kart, Kart Crossing, Grand Theft Auto. Auto. Three games. Uh, Mario Kart 8 is one of them. What are the other two? Also appeared on both the 2020 and 2019 uh-huh. top 20 bestsellers charts. GTA 5. GTA 5. Now. Uh, oh. Breath of the Wild. Call of Duty Black 20, Ops something. 2020 and 2000, uh, 2019 top 20 bestselling charts for like the year. I don't oh. know if GTA was weird. Maybe, yeah. Well, GTA wouldn't seem to be on there. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Ultimate. Mm-hmm. Mario Kart 8. And Mortal Kombat 11. Oh, wow. Yeah. Maybe they mean, maybe they don't consider like Fortnite and stuff like that, like live right. service stuff like GTA Online. And oh, that's what yeah, I was going to say. Because, like, yeah, right, right, they don't right, list like Genshin Impact. The they yeah. don't list, uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, they don't sell. Those are all making way more than Mortal Yeah, but they make way more money than that stuff. Yeah. 19 of the top 20 best selling games of 2021 on Nintendo platforms were published by. Nintendo. Nintendo. Of course. Uh, only one third party, party title cracked the top yep. 20. Monster and Rise. Monster and Rise. Oh, oh, shit. Which ranked? Probably. It sold over 10, it broke 10 million or 7.5 million. So wow. I don't know where that would put Six. it. Nice. Whoa. Whoa. Good guess. I'm looking at my notes, blood. <laughs> <laughs> the mole. Uh, to say. <laughs> Um, I like the way they organize these because they n- the word new appears on the list for anything. They let you know it's new. It wasn't on the list last month. Awesome. Nice. There's only one new thing on the list. Halo Infinite. Boom, right at number two. Way to go, Halo. Madden's at five. Battlefield's 2042. Is it, uh, oh, sorry. Madden's at four. Battlefield's at five. Mario Kart's at six. Miles Morales. Still going Jeez. strong. Yeah. Bumped yeah, up from 12 to seven, well, but that's because everybody's just buying their Spider-Man the craze. Movie. Buying the yeah, PS5 yeah. game you Spider- need to own or get, yeah. finally getting their PS5. Yeah. And, you know. yep. Since December. Uh, Mario Party Superstars at number eight. Wow. Yeah. That's going to be a big Switch selling December. one. Uh, NBA 2K22, mm-hmm. Animal Crossing New Horizons at number 10, just edging in there in the 10, yeah. right at the, the end DLC, of the year. Yeah. 
Um, and then, yeah, no surprise, FIFA, Smash, Minecraft, Far Cry, Just Dance, Forza. Guardians of the Galaxy, it's 17, dropping from 7 the previous month. Mm, that's good. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what Square does with, like, Marvel moving forward. You know, we got right. Avengers, and we got Guardians, you know. One hit, yeah. Like, one done, any, one got, hit. Yeah, got any more there, or are we going to get Guardians 2? Uh, Ghost of Tsushima, 18th, 19th last month. Not, that, that game's not going anywhere. Super Mario 3D World, thanks to that Bowser's Fury. Mm-hmm. 19, wow. Breath of the Wild, number 20. So, wow. Dude, it's a Zelda game wow, selling wow, wow. so much is so nice. It's like the fourth um, best-selling Switch game and for the year, yeah, uh, for 2021 Call of Duty, you know, Black Ops Cold War number two, yep. and Vanguard number one. Um, and then a lot of other stuff that we had talked about, Village number eight, which we said, uh, 3D World at number 10. Valhalla is the only thing that really jumps out. Back for Blood at 18 for the year, oh. which is oh, good. Wow. Yeah, that was on Game Pass too. That had a lot of, uh, a lot of problems. Forza Horizon 5 at number 20. Nice. Which is nice. Making money even though it's on that Game yeah. Pass there. Where they add all of that up. Thank you, Piscatella, for that. Thank you. Before we go into Also This Week, is there anything we know from the Sea of Thieves event? Is that a headline at all, or should we lump that into Also This Week? That happened, like, right before yeah. this podcast started recording. Just they're, they're doing uh, time-based story content, so, like, new story adventures coming up, kind of like a season, like, you get a chapter a month uh, that you have to jump into those three weeks to, to play it. Uh, and then alongside, they're doing uh, what they call Mysteries, which is, like, it sounds like a combination of stuff in the game and ARG stuff. I don't exactly know how it's going to work. Sounds cool. Yeah. Um, and then there's some other things. I didn't get through all the details. But, yeah, Sea of Thieves kicking. Doing good. Sea of Thieves. Uh, also this week, Terra in Esper form will be available <laughs> in Chocobo GP. Uh, yes. She rides the Magitek armor, which is so funny because, and I don't have to worry about spoilers because this is like the beginning of the game, but it's like she's not... It's it's funny that Terra's so associated with that magic tech because that was not a happy time of no. her life. Right. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. She was kind of you know mind controlled, yeah. being forced to kill hundreds of people, and it's funny to see her in a Chocobo GP Yay! shoot missiles <laughs> in her Esper form. What are you doing in the Esper? Yeah, why are you not? A couple other sense. times in the game where you. But gosh darn, we playing that. That looks like fun. Um, yeah, twenty million players for that Halo Infinite, biggest launch in Halo uh, history. Uh, Schreier said Activision's committed to COD 22, COD 23, and Warzone 2 in 2023 on PlayStation, but that's about it. Who knows? Maybe. After that, yeah. That's all they really committed to right now. Guessing that. Warzone 2, huh? Warzone mm. 2. Yeah. No, that game needed a 2. It doesn't. Warzone yeah. Chapter 2. Yeah, it's, it's like yeah, four nights. The next yeah. thing they're doing, maybe they're just maybe calling Warzone 2 now. Maybe that's just a way of speaking now. to exactly. the investors, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Schreier broke that Raven Software testers formed a 34-person union. Uh, they just need voluntary re- rec- voluntary recognition now. Lots of lots of union. Uh, first in the games industry. First in the right? games industry. Yeah, there, it's, it's, it's like not official. It's a though. tough first yeah, yeah, to follow. Right, yeah, because right. there are efforts being made. So shout right. out to everyone They're that's given it a shot. Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned before, Ziva Dynamics is teaming up with Unity to bring super scary looking people, also known as character creation artists or character creation to its artists. Spooky. Basically, like their version of meta human. Yeah. Mm. The contents of each Kingdom Hearts hotel room's treasure box <laughs> is unfortunately embargoed until April. I heard about this. There's like story relevant. But stuff yo, at a hotel. those <laughs> keys look in sick. real life. Real yes, keys. Yes. You what? have to go there to get narrative stuff. I'm real so big mad. keys. What? You gotta like put the go key there, the door. Man. <laughs> yes, and man. The bug, key. The door is a, a fucking keyblade. Damn got, it, COVID. They've got these luxurious like comforters that have. So sick. The character you know art and stuff do? on them. They've They're got curtains let with you, everything. Like, rent a person to, like VR do it for you, or uh, like a uh, remotely do it for you oh, if you can't go in sure. person. Right, yeah, yeah. They're smart. You hire someone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's really hard. I'll to get be those your liaison. Where, I'll wear crazy. my phone like in a, <laughs> on my chest. <laughs> Sony Pictures Classics picked up Alex Helfrecht's A Winter's Journey. The catch is made in dreams. Uh, and that's neat, actually, because I saw, like, when Dreams first came out, there were trailers for all sorts of things. Like, I'm going to make a thing, but here, I just want to throw this out there so you tag me and you know me as a content creator who's going to make this. Come help me make it or follow the progress. So it's like there's a lot of cool stuff going to come with Dreams that's just taking a while because, like, one person's making it mm-hmm. in this platform they learned, like, you know, a year or two ago. Um, so, yeah, it's gonna be, it looks – I saw a couple images from it. It looks beautiful. Early reporting indicated Arceus and other Nintendo games will get better online networking. Uh, and we'll yeah, see that roll uh, out maybe? Monster Hunter Rise uses it, I believe, was the first yes. one to deploy it. And apparently Arceus is using it as well. And apparently if Nintendo keeps adopting it, it means a slight improvement. I, I don't know if it's a slight or a sig- I don't. It know. sounds like a significant like, yeah. technical overhaul. It's not like... We'll have to see how it plays right in practice. But yeah. 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 But 
after all those years of complaining, maybe they're yeah, finally they're doing something about their online, online infrastructure. Bad. But yeah, they're doing stuff to make it better. Hell yeah. Banjo Kazooie is now on Switch. Yeah. Yep. Looks good. Not as good as Rare Replay, which was in widescreen, which is like, oof. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's like a. Uh, it's cl- cleaned HD. up a bit. Yeah. yeah. Majora's yeah, Mask in February. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good one. Good one. Uh, French publisher Microids and Viacom CBS have inked a deal for three, three original Garfield games. <laughs> and I was so tempted to bring that headline up immediately following the Star Wars conversation. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've talked about these three Star Wars games, let's really get down to brass Man. tacks and yeah. figure out where we're going to take the Garfield First franchise. Garfield and Fortnite <laughs> when. <laughs> Hyperscape, Ubisoft's Battle Royale FPS that I played at their preview event and had a good time is shutting down on April 28th. What are you going to do? It's a competitive genre. And Elden Ring is gold, baby. Woo! 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 Or the codes. (laughs) Those codes. Let's play a game! There's music coming from downstairs. You can just dance to that if you want to. From Jeff Simpson. Canadian or no Wadian? <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Okay. A recent, a recent tweet by Jeff Keighley mentioned his Canadian citizenship. You wanted that to answer that one, but no, you don't get it. Damn it. Uh, it took me by surprise. It got me thinking. It's high time to spend a few moments to honor the contributions to this industry. Elise Willems. From the great land in the north. I asked the panel which of these notable gaming and gaming adjacent individuals, real and oh. fictional, do in fact hold. A Canadian citizenship. Okay. Oh, oh the citizenship. Yeah, yeah, yep. More dicey. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. A little dicey. War inspector. Say American or Canadian. American. 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 Duh. American McGee. Canadian. Oh, come on. This American. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Casey Hudson. Uh, Canadian. 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 Nathan Fillion. Canadian. Uh, I don't know. Canadian, I guess. Canadian. Yeah. He's is indeed Canadian. Right? Yeah. yeah. Barry Burton. American. American, American. is apple pie, yeah. baby. Yeah. Right. I was about to say, like, what? Neil Druckmann. American. American. Canadian. Does he hold both? American Israeli, actually. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh. I knew he was Israeli. <laughs> Randy Pitchford. Please no. American. Please no. <laughs> the moon. Randy Pitchford's about as American as you can American. <laughs> Trevor Phillips. From GTA Five. From GTA Five. American. I would. I would say Canadian. He would he have. Is, he is Canadian. <laughs> wow. wow. He is a crazy. He is a crazy Canuck. Yves Gilmore. Uh, no Adian. He's French. Yeah. Yeah. Gabe Quebec. Newell. Uh-huh. American. 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 He's American. Yeah. Don Matrick. Don oh, Matrick. Canadian. Don Matrick. Yeah. Canadian. Oh wow. Jade Raymond. Canadian. Canadian. American. Um, Canadian. Oh. Sid uh, Meier. Oh, Jade, Jeff, uh, and Vic Lucas. Oh, is that, is that the trio? Old, old, uh, Are they just going down the street? Electric playground. With their, oh, with their maple yeah, yeah. leaves. Yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah, sorry. Uh, he might be Canadian, but Sid probably, Meier. Probably American. Sid Meier. Oh, American. American. I want to say American, but I don't know. Canadian, sorta. Oh, sorta. Born in, sorta. born in Canada, has Swiss citizenship, but was oh. raised in the U.S. Oh, okay. okay. Huh. That seems very Tricky classic one. for Sid Meier. Keanu Reeves. Uh, uh, he's American. He's, He's Hawaiian? No. Wait, no, yeah, Hawaiian, right? He's, I mean, the, but does he have Canadian decision? No, I'm going to say no. Canadian. Okay. What? He does. According okay. to Jeff Simpson and Amy Hennig. Uh, American? American. American. Ah. So weird, this game. Jeff Keighley. Canadian. Canadian. <laughs> Elise Willems. Canadian. It is now time for Love and Respect. Love, Love and respect. respect. From Magnate Zell. Longtime listener, first time here. Thinking of all the possibilities from the Microsoft acquisition, I thought of a fun game. One company has bought another and has promised to launch a game that fans will love. Or will they? <laughs> Six acquisitions have happened, and from each game, uh, and from each a game will be made, you must choose one of three fates Ooh. for each that will surely change all of the gaming for years to come. Mm-hmm. You ready? Epic buys Valve and promises to make Half-Life 3, but... One, it launches as a new mode exclusively in Fortnite. <laughs> City 17 is added as a new location on the island. Two, it's a live service looter shooter. Or three, you play as G-Man, and it's an RTS where you control the enemies trying to eradicate humanity. Uh, I think it'd be pretty cool to put it in Fortnite Island. It would be cool. That would be sweet. I think that's what most people would ex- be finding Respect. most acceptable. Yo, Gordon yeah. Freeman in Fortnite, too? i go two. With two. Two? Okay. 
Uh, well, wait, yeah, you can only play it in Fortnite? Is that what they said? Yes. Right. It, would just be, it is it a new mode exclusively in yeah. Fortnite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And City 17 is on the island. Yeah. I uh, I, I think is is you know, as troublesome as a looter shooter right sound, if, yeah, they could it's make that right. work. They yeah. could make that work. Nintendo buys Square Enix and promises to make Super Mario RPG 2 Geno's Quest. But, <laughs> one, it's the next Kingdom Hearts. It's an ARPG where there are Heartless and Final Fantasy characters everywhere and tons of deep lore connecting Super Mario and Kingdom Hearts. Two, the narrator of the story is Mallow. <laughs> and three, <laughs> awesome. Chris Pratt is the voice of Mario. No. Two. Two. Two? Two. 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 Oh, really? Over two? Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. I want right. one, but I'll let him know. I'll let him know. One was pan- yeah. okay. pandering. One was too much sense. pandering. Pandering works. I know. Meta buys EA and has Hazelight get to work on their next goatee, Sisters, a tale of two daughters. <laughs> but, one, it has local co-op quest. It is a local co-op quest 2 exclusive where both people need a headset to play. Oh, wow. Two, it's only launched on mobile for nineteen ninety nine. Three, it's an episodic game. They don't say how many chapters there are or commit to a regular release schedule. <laughs> three? Yeah, three. probably three. Three? I think just Dude, for they, us to do whatever we want Dude, them doing crazy point. shit in VR would be, it would could be, cool. be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Could be cool, yeah, yeah. Sony buys Square Enix and promises to remake Final Fantasy VI, but... Number one, all the chests are loot boxes and all the gear and items in the game are NFTs. <laughs> Two, that. it's revealed that everything Kefka does, Kefka does is for the greater good, and you're the bad guys. But, okay. <laughs> or three, off the success of Stranger of Paradise, the remake is a Souls-like, and all future numbered Final Fantasy games will be as well. Oh, shit. <laughs> three? Oh, yeah. what, I'll take what, three. What is this three? Yeah, Two. Here we on. go. It's the future. Buy in. Capcom buys Konami and promises to make a new Silent Hill, Woo! but... One, I'll take anything. it's a yeah. roguelike where you play as a new character each time. There are upgrades Whoa. and bosses, but it's not all that scary. Zombie, you tried oh, not it. Scary, number two, you play as Pyramid Head and go around Pyramid Heading whoever wanders into your quiet town. Oh. Or number three, it's a fighting game. Oh, God, We're all of these fighting are so game. bad. One. I one. one. One could work. Embracer Group buys Ubisoft and has 4A games work. Uh, so it has four A games. The developer worked to deliver the next Splinter Cell, but one, it's a gritty four-person Left 4 Dead-style zombie stealth survival game. Two, terrorists have infiltrated a moon base. Surprise, they're aliens. And three, <laughs> all of the announcements are that you play as Sam, but when you start the game, you find out Sam is dead, and you're playing as a nameless operative. <laughs> two, uh, two, two. Dude, take choking people out. Like Choking aliens? out some aliens? Yeah, hell yeah. They can still can breathe. You, <laughs> can you imagine if they MGS2 fake outed with oh, Sam? Man. That'd be it's so funny. So stupid, yeah. Thank you for that. From Rakaz. First time writing in after listening to Easy A since 2018. Whoa. Thank you. I recently Whoa. became a patron just as I wanted to share my support for a group that I've had a fantastic time listening to and watching throughout the years. Heck, even Damiani and Brad got me into Final Fantasy XIV, yeah. a game I would rank up there with the best of the best. My question is simply, do you think... With the arrival of the Steam Deck next month, for those that are lucky Ooh. to get it, Wait, Sony. W- should I have ordered that already? Uh, it's too late. It, yeah, it's you too should late. have ordered that no, like on the, I'm months on phase ago. One. But they check your email. They announced the new release. Like, check your the, email. Yeah. I'm checking it right yeah, now. Checked it. Yeah, there's a site status thing. Yeah. yeah. Will Sony or Microsoft ever go the way of the handheld again, or again, or uh, uh, oh, the way of the handheld Wait, again? Who? In Sony's case, my Sorry, Switch is almost Microsoft. exclusively oh, a handheld Microsoft device, and I've always loved handheld gaming. No. Mm-mm. I yeah, I highly say no. no. I feel like yeah, it's Sony, sadly a quick answer. But. It's unfortunate, but yeah, I think Sony their lessons learned is that they they seem to doesn't work out for them as well. Well, they sold more I think Vitas than like PSVRs. They're doing that again. Yeah, but I, I mean, just they don't want to compete in Nintendo. P- yeah, like PSP was pretty successful for what it was at the time. Um, I think the problem is they just get hamstrung by like the, it was going the proprietary route. Yep. Like they they really yeah. I don't think understood how much it would hamstring them. Yeah. Where, and also I think there was just like an arms race for portable like portable handheld systems because both Nintendo and Sony were mm-hmm. in it, like back in the day. The global gaming market was a little bit smaller, and Japan held a bigger portion of the the the, the market. Right. It was more important to have a, a handheld presence in there, um, and I think it's still very important because the world has gone that way. But they seem to just like like their consoles. They like the console game experiences, mm-hmm. and like I think it's just easier for them to develop those types of yeah, you like, have to develop har- that, that hardware and, software. Yeah. You they, wanna know? You wanna know the real answer? Oh, yes. Blood, does the Nintendo person here knows the real answer? Here we go. They already have. Oh. 
Microsoft has xCloud running on No, that's on what phone. I'm saying. Oh. Well, here's the and thing. And Sony of has course. a remote play where you play your PS5 games on your phone. But well. I think Microsoft's way ahead of them in that regard. Yeah. What's like the go-to xCloud phone? Like the go-to xCloud device that it like like beta tested on, and it's like if you really want to do xCloud, you I would guess probably it would be like buy a Samsung them. or something. I, say, but I, I, I want to say Samsung, but it. I'm surprised there hasn't been like the Master Chief Samsung. Mm. Phone. Oh sure. You know, we're like Microsoft yeah, invested dude. with them on one phone that they're like this was made yeah. for xCloud. You're, you're absolutely you know? right, though, bud. Yeah, I was wondering. No, he, he's yeah. right. He's right. Yeah, that's I just where the, I, that's what the market. I mean, because that's, that's where everyone they, they want. It's not playing games. Yeah, they're play their games. Microsoft. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think. Remember, we we're talking about like Meta and like the not understanding. Like they just said this nebulous thing. Like Microsoft gets it because soon it's not going to be console sales. It's not going to be hardware sales that matter anymore. It's going to be those subscribers. Like mm-hmm. they're, they're going to win that race. I'm in Q1 apparently. So Good luck. Nice. nice. Yeah. Nice. From Sean Dupree. Greetings from Boston, allies. We're about to get dumped with 1.5 to 2 feet of snow out here in the city that invented America. What are your favorite snow levels? I'll be oh. listening while I shovel my car to make it good. <laughs> Dude. What? Great email. Snow <laughs> peak. Snow peak? Oh, snow, like snow levels. Like uh, I mean, oh, okay. Okay, I've done Steep. Deep snow peak. I thought, like, how many <laughs> feet of snow is your favorite? Oh, SSX <laughs> tricky, yeah. Uh, Fendrana drifts. Metro Kay. Prime. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what Brad said, but I'll go with the, the beginning of Red Dead 2. Donkey Kong Country, uh, yeah. The blizzard levels there. Did oh, you Donnie, did you Donnie, notice the snow freeze. levels change during the campaign of Red Dead Redemption Two? Do people notice that? <laughs> Dude, uh, the snow goes away. The seasons change. Mm-hmm. You go to a part that was snowy earlier, and it's not snowy. But Donkey Kong Country has all those layers of snow and stuff that like blew your mind back in the day. They did. Yeah, yeah. they did. Yo, Shadow Moses though. Yo, yeah. Yeah. good stuff. What was the GoldenEye level, Jones, where you like go outside? You go back twice. Oh, that's a great level, no. yeah. No. Well, it is Severnaya, but it's but, that's not the name of the level. It's like I've, Complex? No, 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 no. No. No, no. no. no corrections next you week. You go there twice. Metro Exodus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. Uh, Fortnite has really good, surface? actually. Surface? surface, yeah, you do Surface twice. There you go. Yeah. When surface you... 1 and Surface 2. Yeah. 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 I was clearly looking it up, but I had to beat me to that. Thanks a lot. Sorry. That's great. Yeah. Here's of, I gotta, when a Souls question comes up, i got to remember to research that. All of snowboard kids. Good snow. <laughs> well, I think whenever I think about video game snow, I will think about Michael Damiani picking up the Ooh. baby penguin, walking Ooh. to the edge of the snow yeah. stage, and dropping That's the baby penguin level. to yeah. its death. Yeah. Uncharted 2. Ooh, snow yeah. There, yeah. There's some, yeah. Good snow oh, physics, yeah, dude. Good. When you walk through it, I remember. Yeah, it was like new crazy time, tech. Yeah. Hope you're being warm there in, in uh, Boston, Sean. Didn't mean to do a I want to make it fun of the Boston. I did go to school like there. So. The first to do that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah it seems like it. It is time for bets. This week's bet, Life is Strange Remastered launches next Tuesday, February 1st. Two days later, on Thursday when we record this podcast, I'm going to go to Steam. How many reviews will I see on Steam for Life is Strange Remastered Collection? It says Life is Strange Remastered on Steam, but they say Collection. The official title. Uh, I let the panelists know and everyone on this podcast that currently there are 6,700 reviews for True Colors, also a Life is Strange game. Brad Ellis. 100. 100. Michael Damiani. 200. 200. Ila Hank. 712. Where are you going to be, Bloodworth? 74. 74. Okay. Okay. Ooh, the low. Hopefully time. there's none. If there's none, we win. 800. I went high. I went above. I don't know going to be. All right. There we go. Last week's bet, which I sadly cannot finish right now. Rugby 22 launched today, Thursday, January 27th, when we're recording this podcast. I wanted to acquire photographic evidence of the physical you, copy to find out how many balls were going to be on the back of that box. Did you check your Twitter? You see I did not you check my any, Twitter. I can check it right now. See well. if there's any new updates. I think my phone is in the streaming room right now. But oh, I can check. oh, no, what am I talking about? I can check my Twitter on my computer here. <laughs> I need my phone. I need one of these fancy laptops. They should make these portable. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, it's, people say it, it, it seems like it's not re- physical is not releasing until the 4th of February. Oh, but gosh. the game is out now. Oh, no. But physical's not I happening. Hate there. It when I, ha- I got do people, this, they're like, dude, I, I, I went into Warehouse, I went into EB Games, I'm not seeing it. So, Brain so check. there's Aww. still no scores on there. If you're, do you know the team name that you have now? No, I don't. This is going to be the big unveil. You it. were the Melodorous Sea Lions. Yeah, that's what you are for the season. No points on the board. Would you like to know the name of Blood and my team? Oh, you changed both. Oh, we changed you both. You didn't go with the loser, I had to change only. We won. We won. What? 
What are we, blood? We, we changed, though. What are we, yeah. blood? We somehow, by the odds, ended up being the Massive Chubs. We pulled both Isla's names. And we are the Massive Chubs. If you want to understand that, watch the Isla and Don play Russian Fishing 4. Mm-hmm. I asked my friend who's good at numbers, uh, the odds of you guys pulling both my positive uh, adjective and animal, and it was one in 100 yep. <laughs> on the first poll. We're here to break Wild. those records on the Easy Allies wow. podcast. So because... It's my bad. I don't have the bet, and we'll maybe wrap up two bets next week. I will acquiesce to the malodorous sea lions. However, you want to split up the details for the end of this podcast, we can do that. Cool? Think about how you I'm want not, to do that. Jones yeah. isn't doing a good job. I'm not sure when we're actually supposed to make her sounds. Enough. Yeah. I'll promote a video. We'll just kind of make We do it when I say the scores. The scores are zero. There's no scores. There's no score to say. Brad's taking video. Isla, what do you want? I want whatever you don't. I'll take the, the, um, the catchphrase. Okay. So final word. Man. Final word. Those are some Good. smelly sea lions. I got it. <laughs> All right. Uh, check out our goatee video. Wait, wait a minute. Well. Hold no, on. No, wait, this is not I'm the end of the show, man. <laughs> what? You're wrapping it up? Well, just, I said pick winners. I didn't say you can do it now. All right, Mr. You would have usually have done ready. that when at, yeah, yeah, at yeah. the end, but yeah. I have to tell you about Patreon.com slash East the that? pivotal part of the East Yalas podcast. <laughs> oh. That is where people can go to really dig in to the Easy Eyes. You can really get involved on Patreon.com slash Easy Eyes. True. There's you also some tiers you can be involved with. As an yeah. audio feed. We yeah. just did, we did Q&A and Tier Maker today live on, Switch, uh, live on Twitch. Live on Twitch, I wish. <laughs> if One you day. wanted, you could go to Patreon.com slash Easy Eyes. That's Suggestion Squad. Get in on those. Get in on the showcase, which I will be doing with Ben uh, next month. Mm-hmm. All sorts of fun ways. There are podcast producers that we thank at the end of every month. I read off all of these names from our shout out tier all the way down to the podcast producers. Your names know this are have been etched into the middle of my brain for the rest of I cannot get these names out. There are so many names. When one of them is added or feels like my brain went over a speed bump. Wait a minute. That person's name moved. Um, oh, and we have a oh sorry, we have a survey that ends Friday the 28th, which is tomorrow. So if you're listening to the podcast early access on Friday, you can go to Rooster Teeth to see. We'll have that in the description. You can check out a survey for us on Rooster Teeth. We would appreciate it if you do. But we certainly appreciate those podcast producers and all the people on our shout out tier. We have four patrons at the shout out tier that we will shout out right now because they deserve it. Gosh darn it. Shout out to Caleb Togi Crawford, L. Fannis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, and Nick. Shout out. Shout, shout, out. Out. shout out. Now, the stinky sea lions can wrap up this podcast. Ooh. Take it away. Yeah, check out our goatee video that just went up. Yeah. We went a lot of work into that. Mm-hmm. And Blood said you can check out our double de- deliberations also. Mm-hmm. Debilitations. Delib- yes. <laughs> they were debilitating. Um, the metaverse sucks. Oh. <laughs> good night and good game. Let me show you rock and roll. Don't forget about our Everse. I'm so mad. I want to go there, man. Yes, man. The key to the door is a fucking keyblade. The Easy Allies would like to thank our Patreon podcast producers. We apologize in advance for all the ally names we are about to misspell and mispronounce. Caleb Togi Crawford, L. Thanis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, Nick, Edsger M. Hernandez, Walker Hope, Will Schmuck, Alexander Zirianov, Ali Kat, Arvind Rajan, Beaten Down Brian, Bradley Spees, Discarded Digit, Douglas Chomich, Esdogal, Freya Lawson, Hayden Hargraves, Happy Gaming, Jay Shee, Jesper Popmel Dufay, Jesse Blue, Jose Gutierrez, Miguel Rivas, Nicholas Johnson, Paolo Costabel, Richard G. Flowers, Robert Stoffel, Roy Sung, Sage Mode Q, Sigma, S Snake 24, Chum Nguyen, Valmar, Andre, Aurelien Grenier, Blue, Brandon White, Brian Kruger, Dale Sun, Dave Red, Gary James, G Levin, James Vitt, John Burns, Kroldemort, Leif, Luke Bennett, Mango, Marcel Markov, Mark J. Betters II, Matthew Holcomb, Matthew Pauling, Nathan Watkins, Oni Blackmage, Pete Shoemaker, Rob Bob Will, Robert Crouch, Sam Hendrick, Stepan Hakobian, Stephen Thomason, 
The Banana Forklift Killer, Tom Ironman, Rack, Zachary Wingate, 44 Stars, Accounts Payable, Adam Henry, Ahmed Al Rashed, Alex Monaco, Alexander Irving, Andreas Risberg, Anthony Galvin, Barry Tomasini, Bjorn R. Haraldsvik, Blake Bonsack, Bread Roll Art, Brian Foster, Briscoe Davis, Brittany Fuller, Bunny Chen, C.S. Lewis, Katie Garza, Chase Caldwell, Candy Coated Thorns, Chief Uhu, Christian Simniak, Christian Hundorf, Christoph Fatui, Christopher Santis, Clay Roberts, Cody Westley, Corey Jackson, Corey Landega, Culinary Stud, Cutter Hicks, Cyberboa, Damnable Nook, Dan Sebring, Daniel Wong, David Wilson, David Boyarski, Delisi, DF, Dimitri Zetas, Don Turner, DRD7 of 14, Edison S. Prada Jr., Eric Maynard, Eric Tobias, Eric Gustafson, Espen Gotchman, Ethereal Ether, Faraz Rizvi, Fishflop, Forest, From the Void, Gabriel Aberg, Glenn Olson, Gustav Strombaum, Hadi Ali, Helen Y, Hitman 47, Hugo Aguilar, I Sun Chor, Ian Anderson, Isaac Swanson, Ivan Swade, Jacob Lyon, Jay Aldiar, Jameson Lapine, Jana, JC3, Jeffrey Ruchtenwald, Jeremy Ferris, Jesse Fish, Jesse Wilkeson, Jethrin, Joe Frantic, Joey Din, John Gallagher, Jojo Denko, Jordan Phillips, Joshua Vancewall, Julius Garcia, Junior Motomura, Justin Payne, Carl Williams, Kevin Gillet, Leon Keyes, Lindsey Wells, Linson Wu, Liam Ahern, Luis Sabara, Lion Crown 19, Malcolm Moshet, Manuel Thomas, Marcel Giro 017 Frolic, Marco Hernandez, Materia Addict, Matthias Clare, Matt Ferguson, Matt Karwaski, Matthew Holmes, Matthew T. Ryan, Mazrim Tame, Megadet, Megan McDonough, Michael Bisegli, Michael Clendenan, Michelle Nub, Miguel, Mikhail Aniel, Mike Calvi, Mike Hook One, Mikey Mizek Novak, Misuki 211, Mithers Strongbeard, Mo Grant, Monica, Mr. Anarchy, Mr. Matati, Nefertiti Jenkins, Nevi Sun, Ulf himself, Oru Gacino, Pablo Rodriguez, Paul Sway, Philip Higdon, Quinn Riley, RF Switch, Rafa David, Raymond Wheeler III, Reed Johnson, Ritz 1906, Roy Eschke, Russell Bateman, Ryan Anderson, Sam Sorensen, Samuel Copeland, Sean Cornett, Sebastian Urban, Sebastian Trier, Shaz, Sig Raghunadan, Sneaky Gato, Splontot, Stefan Heinz, Strikeout NZ, Super 3D Cow, T Beaks 15, Tense George, The Classiest Hobo, Tim Strothman, Thomas Blaze Fauchereau, Tim Mann, Tim O'Keefe, TJ Sullivan, Toasty Soul, Travis Ng, Trevor Thomas, Tristan Howard, Trizac, Tuttle, V8 Dave, V Kira Ray, Volker Bach, Wavy Chula, Wobess, Wouter DeHaze, ZK.